the oligarchs who, as I said, control the media, recognize uh, this mood and this demand in Russia for a strong man or uh, a sort of somebody very different in statue and in appearance from, from Yeltsin and proceeded through by the means of television ultimately to create their own security man, their own obedient, as they believed, you know, a man who would be obedient, uh, who would come from the security services background but yet would be easily controlled uh, by the oligarchs and, and their media. And the, you know, nobody knew the name, nobody recognized the man, there was this guy Vladimir Putin, nobody heard of. And he was very much the, the product of the media, uh, of, again, of the construction of the reality. Uh, of course, the very first thing that uh, Putin did upon becoming uh, Russia's president, way before uh, taking control over the commanding heights of the economy of uh, oil and gas and natural resources, was to take control uh, over the media. Uh, and particularly over, over television. And the remote control, television remote control, became the main skipper, if you like, the main tool of ruling the country. In the 90s, there was an interesting um, dynamic between those who controlled the media and who commanded the media and the security services. Um, particularly, you know, a particular example of that was the presidential elections in, in Russia in 1996, where Yeltsin, uh, contrary to, uh, to popular uh, perception that Yeltsin was, was facing uh, just the communists, I mean, Yeltsin was, in my view, never, and the documents bear this out, was never about to surrender power anyway. But Yeltsin was faced with two groups within the Kremlin that were fighting each other. One group were his, you know, led by his bodyguard uh, and by other security services establishments who were calling on him to cancel the elections or postpone them because of uh, Yeltsin's low rating. And the other group were some of the liberal economists, the oligarchs and the media, who wanted Yeltsin to win transparently and openly because that would give Yeltsin legitimacy that will help to integrate Russia into the West, that would increase the value of their assets. The Siloviki, the security people on the other hand, wanted to make Yeltsin as much as a, you know, a hostage to them as, as possible. And these two powers clashed, and for the first time, the media gained the upper hand. Uh, the security, uh, the, the bodyguard Alexander Kazakov was sacked, uh, the media people were promoted, the president of NTV television channel was offered the job of Yeltsin's chief of staff. What, he, what Putin did a few years later, having observed the power of the media, was an extraordinary thing. He effectively merged these two things together. He merged security services with the media. He understood perfectly well that in a country of the stage of Russian economic development, you could not uh, rule simply by means of the police and security services repression. And anyway, he, is, he was not, and to this day, I don't think, and we shouldn't exaggerate, you know, he is not a bloodthirsty tyrant who is just desperate to kill his own countryman. Uh, even after the process in 2011 and 12, Russia, thank God, did not have Tiananmen Square. Uh, so he understood very well the power of ideas uh, and, and the media. And he preferred to rule the country by, yes, by security services who were put in, in charge of the key government positions and economic positions, but also the media which allowed to manipulate the narrative. Uh, which he had very successfully done. And he brought together these two services, the security services and the media. And the result of that merger was the situation which I described earlier, which we faced in uh, Ukraine uh, and which we still face today, not just in Russia and not just in Russian periphery, uh, but now further west. Um, in Germany, in the attacks, propaganda and information warfare attacks in Germany, Finland, Sweden, financing of uh, right-wing uh, parties in, uh, in France. Now, I'm very far from suggesting that um, Vladimir Putin has anything to do uh, with um, extraordinary rise of Donald Trump. <laughs> um, but that said, uh, the, 
the hopes and expectations in Moscow that Trump will win. And some of the rhetoric uh, that I, you know, we're hearing uh, from Trump campaign about making America great again, about uh, imposing limitations on the media and changing libel laws, calling journalists scum, um, and particularly total disregard for truth and facts. All those things, um, for somebody who has been reporting from Russia, uh, seem just too painfully familiar. Uh, 